Hey everyone! Today I want to talk about something that uh, I meant to address a long time ago. There is uh, a lot of misconceptions out there about speed and pushback and nose dives, and uh, I want to try my best to address that. It's, uh, it's not an easy topic, but I'll see what I can do. So, how fast can you go on a one wheel? Um, why do one wheels nose dive? And how can we limit speeds on a one wheel? And why is there pushback? But before I can address all that, I need to take a step back and explain again how balancing works. And um, it might be obvious to some of you, but I think to many, it is not. And a one wheel keeps you balanced by accelerating or slowing down your board. And the one wheel controller essentially tries to keep the board level by bringing it back under your center of gravity. And acceleration and braking are not the primary intent. They are merely a side effect. And that's key to understand. So, just to illustrate this, when there is a balanced rider, meaning if you're perfectly centered over the wheel, you will end up not moving at all. The vehicle will, will remain stationary and the controller is happy because you're balanced. Now, you lean forward, so the controller notices that it has an IMU, it detects obviously when you do wheel movements. So it detects, uh oh, we are about, the rider is about to fall forward. That's what it thinks. So what do we do to prevent that? And it decides, I'm going to move the wheel forward to bring the wheel back under the center of gravity of the rider. But the side effect, what turns up, what ends up happening is you move forward. And that is how balancing works. It, the board wants to make, or the controller wants to get the board to be level. And by doing that, it accelerates the board. So as a rider, you intentionally lean forward to take advantage of the fact that the board will try to balance you and that will make you accelerate. Now, one question that comes up in that context is, could we enforce a safe speed limit? And the short answer is no. And here is a, an attempt at explaining it. Imagine a rider who's cruising at a safe 15 miles an hour, right? But now the rider leans forward. Again, the balancing principles dictate that the board must accelerate to bring the board back under the rider's body. So what if the rider keeps leaning forward? The board is forced to keep accelerating. Now, some, I, a lot of comments when somebody posts a nosedive video or a crash video, some people will comment, well, can't they just force it to slow down? Or, or if I were future motion, I would just enforce a speed limit. Well, that's easier said than done. Because if the rider leans forward and the board slows down, meaning the controller says, I don't care what the rider is doing, we're above the speed limit, I'm going to slow down that motor. Well, the result is a forced nosedive, and obviously we don't want to do that. Instead, the board will try to accelerate, hoping that the rider will be reasonable and not continue to lean forward. When the one wheel can no longer balance you, the nose or tail of the board will hit the ground. And the main reason is usually the controller cannot keep up. You're either riding too close to the speed limit or too close to the torque limit. 
Other reasons exist too. There's bumps and holes and soft ground, and there's also hardware failures. But let's assume, I mean, those are really rare. They exist, and sure, some boards go bad, and there's plenty of videos. Every time something happens, you will see a video about it, but it is really rare. There's a very small percentage where that happens. In the DIY community, that is actually a lot more common. But I don't want to dwell too much on that. The main factors that affect the likelihood of nosedives are rider weight. Heavier riders are harder to balance. So it's more work for the controller and more likely you will nosedive. Then there's speed. The slower you are, the easier it is for the board to balance you because more of the board's power can be used to balancing instead of to keep you going. Resistance. And if you're on smooth pavement, that's one thing, but if you add, if you add wind, grass, mud, hills, all of that requires more effort to accelerate your board. And then there's the battery level. An empty battery increases the chances of nosedives. And last not least, and maybe I should have put that first, there's rider skill. An experienced rider is less likely to end up nosediving. Um, they may even be able to sense or avoid a nosedive altogether. Now, related to this, if we want to know, you know, since speed affects this, how fast can a one wheel go? In a one wheel, we've got a motor in the tire. Right? We've got a motor in the wheel, and that's a brushless motor. And a brushless motor's RPM speed is determined by the voltage of the battery and the motor's KV rating. If you want to know more about KV, Google it. I'm not going to discuss what it is. Um, the vehicle speed is determined by the RPM and the wheel size. So naturally, even though the Pint and the XR have the exact same motor, the XR can theoretically go faster because it has an 11-inch tire and uh, the Pint has a 10-inch tire. Higher voltage means higher speed. That's why the new GT with its 18S battery or 75 volts can go faster than the 63 volt Pint or XR. Um, but higher motor KV also means higher speed. The Hypercore is estimated to have around 14 KV. Um, the FUB 188 or Fungineers hub also has a 14 kV, something in that order. And then the float wheel hub that has been available for a while is, uh, is 17 kV. So with the same voltage, you can go 15% faster. And this is the, the hub that I'm using in my Fun Wheel GT. Now, what is top speed? And that really, so if you're asking what is the top speed, we first have to agree on how do we define top speed? Is it how fast the wheel can spin on its own? Or how fast you can go before you hit pushback? Or is it how fast you can safely ride? Or is it at what speed will you nosedive? So all are, those are different speeds and uh, I will only focus right now on at what speed will you nosedive. So can I predict how fast I can safely push it? Um, your top speed primarily depends on voltage. And as we now know, GT has a 20% higher voltage than the XR or Pint. Uh, but also the XR and Pint have an 8% higher voltage than a one-wheel plus. 
but and this is what causes a lot of a lot of confusion and a lot of unexpected nose dives and a lot of frustration the voltage is not fixed so a 15s pint pint x or xr battery is 63 volts when full but only 45 volts when empty so that means that your theoretical top speed is vastly higher when the battery is full than it is when the battery is empty high torque situations also lower your voltage so meaning the controller has to pump a lot of current a lot of amps into the motor um, your battery voltage can easily drop by five volts or more this is what's called voltage sag um, so whenever you're going uphill or when you're when you're accelerating hard the voltage that's available to you to determine your top speed can be five volts or more lower than whatever your current voltage level is so even a fully charged battery when you're accelerating your top speed will be lower during that acceleration than if you're just coasting or if you're going downhill um, that can be compensated for by using beefier batteries like the cbxr or if you have external vnr setups you can reduce the sag and thereby have more consistent um, top speed now the xr motor is 14 kv and in theory the xr should max out at roughly 20 miles an hour but the xr and the pint they use some secret sauce and we've seen reports of speeds as high as 29 to 30 miles an hour and all that with without changing the voltage right they're using standard they might use cbxr batteries when they achieve these speeds but it was still only 63 volts max um, and most likely this technology is field weakening which is what now has been introduced in the VESC uh, firmware as well which is uh, essentially I don't fully understand it or you, I barely understand it at all actually but it's somehow it's, it's got something to do with reducing the electromagnetic magnetic it's the electro it's reducing the electro they're somehow reducing the electromagnetic field and that then requires less voltage for the same speed but is using additional current or amps so that is why the xr or stock xr can be faster than a vesk xr with the same battery so at last i want to touch on pushback so pushback is when the nose of your board lifts to alert you to alert the rider that they're going too fast why do one wheels use pushback well remember the board can't force you to slow down so instead it's trying to get your attention and hopes you'll do the right thing is pushback dangerous well not if you respect it what is dangerous is the excessive speed that leads to the pushback but pushback in a sense can make the problem worse so most riders they take notice and slow down in response to pushback but what if you don't notice it like on the xr it's not that noticeable or when the battery voltage is low you're going uphill you may not notice it at all or you may intentionally ignore it pushback lifts your nose and that lifted nose instead of being like this when you're going at a steady speed your nose is now higher up and that gives you additional clearance and basically your gas pedal if that's your gas pedal your gas pedal has now more range meaning 
if you intentionally ignore it, you can actually accelerate more than you could without pushback. And some writers I've heard that they even use pushback intentionally. For example, when they're approaching a steep ramp, they're saying, oh yeah, I, I like just hitting pushback. And then that way, when I get up the ramp, I can make it up steeper ramps than I, if I don't hit pushback. So yeah, that works, but it significantly increases the risk of nose dives because now the board is actually making it easier for the rider to further push the limits and um, exceed the controller the controller's capabilities. So this is all. Um, that should take away a lot of the mysteries out of why is there pushback and what's the theoretical top speed or why did I just nosedive? So I hope it helped and see you guys next time.